Johnny Clayton, the defending champion, and you are still defending after that. But did you get away with one there? Oh, massively. Do you know what I mean? It's um, it's always great to win a game. That was scrappy. That was basically not given to me. But Dirk missed so many chances. How I got through that, I don't know. But I'm still here and try again on Wednesday. At the first break, are you one that looks at the screen as you go off? I did have a sneaky look. It wasn't a pretty look. Um, I think it was a 63 average at the time. And I'm not one, really, to look at averages. Because the average is just for show. It's the doubles that count. The, the W that counts. But I looked and I thought, I'm in trouble here big time. And every time, you know, I kind of looked, Dirk was hitting treble 20. And I was thinking, oh, please, Dirk. Please just get off the radios for a minute. But how I got through, I don't know. It was a big 130 finish in there. Was that the turning point? Was that when you got a foothold in the game and felt you were involved? No, I don't think so. Listen, it's a great out. It's a brilliant out. But... At the end of the day, listen, there wasn't a massive crowd in there tonight and they're only trying to do their bit, yeah, but you hear voices big time and it's, it's a weird feeling, but you hear voices and they're only trying to support you and because the crowd wasn't that big there tonight, you could hear these voices as if, as if they were stuck in your ear and to be fair to Dirk, I think it put Dirk off a few times um, when they're shouting for me, obviously, but... Um, you know, that is the game. It was the same for both of us. But still, when you're trying to concentrate, it's difficult when you hear these voices. Does that show how far you've come as a player in a short space of time that you can deal with these things now as well and setbacks that maybe you wouldn't have got over before? Maybe, but, you know, listen, I'm out to win. Like every other player, you know, I'll dig deep. But, you know, it wasn't pretty at all. I, I don't know what my average was and I, I don't really want to know, to be honest. But... The thing was, you know, when I got that chance, like, I think Dirk missed whatever and I took a 25 out. You know, I think, oh, God, you're alive again. So I just tried to win the next leg and the next leg and somehow I got through that match. Is there extra pressure here as defending champion? Yeah, obviously, you know, it's, it's whoever you defend, it, it sounds good. You're trying to do it again. So obviously there's, there's some pressure, but... Listen, when you're playing a great player like Dirk, like Dimi um, on Wednesday, it's tough and you've got to do a job and that was definitely not Johnny Clayton there tonight. Johnny, pleasure, thank you. Cheers, Pat. Johnny, could you sense after the, the shout from the crowd that Dirk's concentration slipped a little bit and you had to kind of jump all over that? Uh, to be honest, um, th there was one time he, he, he was, like, well, basically letting the dark go and he stopped and he turned around to the crowd. There was nothing nasty but it, it, it's just the wrong shout at the wrong time, if that makes any sense. It's like Dirk was concentrating and he was, you know, he was trying to hit treble twenties or, or, or whatever, um, you know. And that obviously that shout put him off his game. So, um, you know, you've got to stand behind him and, you know, just get on with your job. It, it's difficult. Played Dirk in the last three tournaments. Now you're expecting a few more battles with him between now and the end of the year. Yeah, I think we're getting best buddies on tour. I think because um, we're playing against each other so often. Um, yeah, I think we're getting to know each other, especially each other's game. He's a massive 180 thrower. You know, you don't give Dirk chances like you know. And tonight, he didn't take those chances. And for you, what's the feeling like coming back to Leicester as defending champion? Yeah, it's fantastic. I love, I love Leicester. It's, it's a great arena. Um, you know, obviously it's a Monday night, the crowd isn't massive, but it's going to get busy, I think, and, you know, the atmosphere is going to be bouncing, so um, I'm looking forward to Wednesday. Only Phil Taylor and Michael Van Gogh have ever defended this, obviously a long way to go yet, but what would it mean if you could join that list? Ah, oh, it'd be fantastic, do you know what I mean? Um, it's nice to get your name on that list once. To defend it, it would be brilliant, so um, cross fingers. Cheers, sorry, Cheers mate. Johnny, what was the reaction like when you saw the draw come out, Dirk in the first round, and just the, the quarter that you are in is such a tough one to get out of? Yeah, <laughs> you know, I just looked at Dirk van Duvenborder. You know, I got a giggle to myself because you're thinking, ha, oh, not him again. But, you know, it, that's the way it is. At the end of the day, it's a draw. And that's what you've got to take on. You know, whoever you play against, you have to face that player. But when I saw Dirk's name, it was... Um, you know, I did have a giggle of myself because we're playing against each other so often. It's, uh, yeah, it was a bit funny. But, you know, everybody in this tournament deserved to be there. So um, it's going to be a difficult tournament.
a couple of the players that we spoke to tonight say they really relish the, the double in format. Is it something you enjoy or do you not look forward to the, to the double in format? Well, I love double 16, but sometimes it's not my friend. And uh, But no, genuinely, it's all jokes aside. It's a leveler, I think. Do you know what I mean? You could be world number one or world number whatever in this tournament. You know, you have to get off with that double. And, you know, I, I just think it's an exciting tournament. But it hurts if you can't get off and somebody's just throwing 180s against you. But uh, to be fair, you know, that's what it is.